Hello and welcome to this special video on the channel, which is usually just about mathematics, but today we will talk about some election system. It's about the German election system, which is used in the election in February 2025. And what is elected there is the so-called Bundestag, which is the federal parliament of Germany. Therefore, I would say it's the most important election for the German state, but still a lot of people inside Germany don't know how this system actually works. And this is the reason why I want to make this video and we will see that the whole system is quite interesting and actually not so complicated at all. The first thing you should note is that this Bundestag, this federal parliament, consists of 60-30 members which are elected by the German people. So we say that we have 630 seats which can be filled in. And in the end, the result should be that the important parties are represented in the correct ratios in the Bundestag. So this should be the first thing to remember. In the federal parliament, we have a proportional representation of the parties. And I will tell you soon what the attribute important means here. However, let's first look how this voting process basically works. So let's say here we have our voter with the corresponding ballot paper. And now the German election system says that every voter has exactly two votes. On the ballot paper there is a first vote on the left hand side and a second vote on the right hand side. And indeed this is the whole idea. We have a mixed system for the whole voting system here. And in order to understand that, let's have a closer look at this ballot paper. So as already mentioned, it's divided into two parts where we have the first vote on the left and the second vote on the right. And despite the naming, the second vote is the more important one because it goes directly to a party. This means as a voter you find a whole list of parties here on the right hand side and you are allowed to set exactly one cross. So let's say for example you vote for party C. And to be clear, this ballot paper is really long because this list here goes on for 20 to 50 parties. And since there are so many parties there, the rule is that only the important parties get seats in the parliament. And now we already know the total number of second votes gives us the proportional representation of the parties in the Bundestag. Now obviously this would already work as a voting system, but now comes in the next layer because we also want to vote for people. So this is where the first vote comes in and please note usually such a person is associated to a party. One can see this connection immediately because the person and the party are on the same line. But to make it really clear, the person also gets the party next to its name again. However, it's also allowed to be a candidate without having a party associated to you and then you are just at the bottom of the list. So all the independent candidates are just at the end of the list. And now as a voter, you are allowed to make one cross for a person you want to send to the Bundestag. So the first vote cannot change the proportions in the federal parliament, but it can tell us which people take the seats. So in total what we get here is a so-called mixed member proportional representation system. And I would say roughly you can already remember that for the first vote we have a winner takes it all principle and for the second vote we have our proportional representation. And now I will tell you exactly how this system works in practice. First you should know that in Germany the whole election process has three layers. The outer level is given by the entire electoral area which is given by the whole Federal Republic of Germany. And this one consists of exactly 16 states. But now for the parliament election process, these states are split into smaller parts again. And what we get is a total of 299 electoral districts. And there it's important to know that such a district always has to lie inside a given state. So for example we can look here at the state of Hessian and find the electoral districts with numbers 166 to 187. And now it's important to note that each electoral district has its own ballot paper. And the reason for that is exactly the first vote because inside such a district different persons on the first vote compete against each other. This means inside a given district we have direct candidates 
And after all the first votes are counted, we have one winner for each district. In fact, this is crucial to know, these electoral districts are only important for the first vote. Because the second vote, on the other hand, exclusively happens on the state level. So what we actually have is that each party gives out a party list in each state. If a party does not give out a party list in one state, then in this state the voter cannot vote for this given party. So the result is, depending in which state you live, the ballot paper on the right hand side can look different as well. Ok, so now we already know how this procedure works. A party collects second votes and the number of the second votes determines how many seats this party has in the Bundestag. However, these seats are first filled with the corresponding winners from the electoral districts. And obviously a winner in a district is just the candidate with the most first votes. And now in the case that this winner was an independent candidate, he immediately gets the seat in the Bundestag. However, if we have a winner which is associated to a party, which is always the case, we have the special rules for the distribution. And how this procedure works, I show you with explicit numbers. And the first important number is the total number of valid second votes in whole Germany. And a common number would be like 46 million and they are distributed over all the parties that took part in the election. So we can just count the second votes and afterwards we know how well a given party has done. And usually we express this number as a percentage with respect to the total number of valid second votes. And in fact, this share of votes now determines which parties are actually important. However, on the other hand, there's also a second ingredient for that, because we can also look how successful the parties were with their first votes. Essentially, the total number of first votes is not important, it's just important how many districts the parties could win. And now we have all the information and we can decide which parties are allowed to have seats in the Bundestag. Indeed, parties that have less than 5% are completely thrown out. Unless they have won at least 3 districts, because then they are spared. So we have to check if the 5% is reached and then we can have a look at the districts as well. So exactly this is what we call the electoral threshold. It's often called the 5% hurdle because as you can see here, 4.8% are not enough. And the only way out for a small party for that would be to have at least 3 successful candidates in districts. However, I would say this is usually harder for a small party because there they have to compete against strong candidates from big parties. Moreover, at this point I should mention that there is an exception of this electoral threshold. Indeed, national minority parties are not cancelled in the process here, but at the moment there's only one in Germany. Ok, so after these cancellations, only the important parties remain and they get the seats in the Bundestag. And the number of seats can just be calculated by a rule of proportion, where we also have to take in rounding arrows. And the system one uses in Germany is called Webster method, or also known as Zetlagü method. So it's not complicated at all, it's just important to know that in the end we want to have 630 seats in the parliament. This means after these steps, the proportions of the parties in the parliament are already fixed. So the parties already know how strong they are, but now we have to fill the seats with people. And in the first step, we have to go back to the state level to see how the seats distribute over the states. And this can be done for each party separately, because we know how the second votes distribute over the states. In other words, now we have a list again, where we list all the 16 states and the corresponding second votes for the given party. Which means we can just apply our Webster method again, to get the correct distribution of the seats over the states. Hence, after that, the party inside the given state knows how many seats they get in the Bundestag. But please note, this calculation here has to be done for each party in the list. And after that, we are able to fill in the seats with people. And the best way to see that is to look at an example. So let's say we have party B in our state 2. 
And now we know this party in the state gets exactly eight seats. And now we remember that this party already had a party list in this state from the beginning. Indeed, there are real people on this list and the list is numbered consecutively. This means we can just go step by step and give the seats to different persons. And we can just go through the list until all the seats are taken. However, actually some other people have a higher priority and we can put them on top of the list. And these are exactly the winners of districts that belong to the given state and the given party. Obviously we only take the winners that belong to the party B and then we can also order this list. On top we have the best winner, so the candidate that got proportionally the most first votes. This means only the percentage of the winner in the given district matters. So you see then comes the next candidate with the next highest score and so on. So you see the rules are quite clear and then we have a list of priorities. Hence in this example we can allocate the 8 seats. And in fact now we can see that we have essentially 3 cases that can happen. Let's start with the best case where all the winners of districts get seats in the Bundestag. And you see after the winners also the first people on the party list in the state get some seats as well. So you have a higher chance of getting a seat in the Bundestag if you are at the top of the list but you have an even higher chance if you win your district. Moreover in this case you see it does not matter at all how high your percentage is in winning your district. However this changes if too many people of your party win a district because then this percentage matters. In this case the worst winners measured with the percentage in the district will not get a seat. The reason for that is that there are simply not enough seats for the party in this case. And please note in this case the party list in the state is also not touched. Now speaking of the state party list this one also explains why we have a third case. Actually this third case should not happen but it's theoretically possible. So it could happen that the state party list is just too short. Then suddenly the party does not have enough people to fill in their seats. So you could say the party didn't find enough people before the election to put on the list and therefore the result is that some seats in the Bundestag stay empty. So they just stay unoccupied in the Bundestag which means that in this case it could happen that the parliament has less than the 630 seats. On the other hand there is also an exceptional case that the 630 seats are exceeded but this is only the case when one party is really strong. Roughly speaking it says if the number of votes tell us that the party should get more than 50% of the seats in the Bundestag then this should also happen. In that case it could happen that we have to add some seats to get that result. However I guess in this election in 2025 no party will be so strong. And if we assume that all state party lists are long enough then the Bundestag will have exactly 630 seats this time. Ok so now I hope that this whole election procedure is clearer and that you know how voting in Germany works. If you have some questions you can put them in the comments and there we can discuss them. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.